Okay, so I've decided today to make you guys a video, a short video, pertaining to what's the best dehydrator to make things such as raw vegan dehydrated crackers, dehydrated crisps, dehydrated cereal. Yeah, make your own cereal. Salt free, sugar free, whatever you want free, gluten free. <laughs> the whole nine yards. And I've decided to <clears throat> show you a couple of my recipes just to, you know, give you more evidence pertaining to the fact that honestly, the Excalibur is better. The Excalibur 9 tray, okay? That's the one I'm using right now, the Excalibur 9 tray. And I'm going to be comparing it to the digital Sedona 9 tray dehydrator, okay? First, my favorite, let's go with the Excalibur 9 tray, okay? Con. When you go to buy it on Amazon, eBay, or whatever website you're looking at, it's not going to look as good as the other dehydrators. Mainly because of its texture, okay? It's got this strange ingrained pattern on the rusted plastic, and it just looks kind of cheap, crappy, and run down when you're looking at it, okay? This is my favorite one, by the way. <laughs> when you buy the dehydrator, it's a whole different story. It looks really, really, really nice, clean, and posh, better put, it looks, it looks posh, especially with the writing, it says Excalibur down on the left hand side, and at the top, now here's another disadvantage, okay, when it comes to your approach to this machine, this beast of a machine, at the back, way at the back, are the knobs and the dials, okay? Minus an on and off switch. Yeah. So, a couple of cons there. If you want to change the temperature or the time, you have to reach to the back of the device. Now, this is often an issue for most people because they push it in between small spaces. Me, personally, I don't mind because I've got a long reach, so I can actually change things whenever I like. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that I've said it doesn't have an on or off switch. So, I don't really like having to use the electrical plug socket next to the dehydrator to turn it on and off. If you're out there and you don't mind doing that, then it's okay. You could always just turn the timer all the way to naught and it'll turn off by itself. And that's kind of a built-in feature with the device, I'm assuming. You know what they say about assuming things? It makes an ass out of you and me. So <laughs> don't really want to break the device. You don't want to electrocute yourself neither. However, the only benefit that I see going for this machine is the fact that it really does get things crispy. Mmm, like super crispy. It doesn't take very long at all to dehydrate something to crispy or to the texture that you want. You don't have to make things crispy all the time. Matter of fact, a lot of people who make things such as tacos or wraps out of seaweed or out of ooh, coconut. If you get the coconut jelly and you grind it up in the blender to a nice thick paste and you put that on a Teflex sheet, it will make a nice, it will spread out by itself and make a very nice wrap if you put it in the dehydrator for about five hours. Keep an eye on it if you're using the Excalibur. Because if you were to use the nine tray digital Sedona dehydrator, You'll be waiting maybe 24 hours, and even then it won't get done, <laughs> okay? This is why the dehydrator gave me food poisoning. I was waiting far too long to make raw vegan sausages. Now, recently I've made raw vegan burgers using the Excalibur dehydrator. And when I mean recently, I mean about two months ago. <laughs> and I didn't actually like it, mainly because it was too good when it comes to replicating the texture and the taste of meat. Now, as you all know that I don't eat that kind of stuff, my body doesn't like it. Me being the body, I don't like eating meat, I don't like the smell of it and all that jazz. I'm, I guess, a food intuitive in that sense, yeah? So, if you guys are transitioning, I'd say make stuff like vegan burgers and vegan sausages. Just don't do it in the Sedona dehydrator because you will make yourself ill, okay? Use the Excalibur. Now, I've never used anything outside of these two dehydrators, so I can't really give you any more advice pertaining to what's better out there. 
but so far on the market, just as like the, the blenders, we've got the Vitamix one that everyone's talking about, and we got the original normal ones, I suppose you can say, the ones that tend to break easily. <laughs> and it tends to be around a certain price range. If you get the cheaper ones that are under $200, they tend to break. Out there, if you live in the UK, if you get the cheaper ones that are under around about 150, maybe you're pushing it. If you buy one, it's about 120. They're going to break. So obviously, you'll go towards the Vitamix because it's more commercialized. It's a blender that you can use over and over and over again. Well, when I'm talking about these two dehydrators, I'm basically putting it in the same ballpark when it comes to commercial use. Okay, so these ones can be used a lot. They're the most popular on the market. And that is why I've got them, because I'm the type of guy who goes for the things that are, well, going to last. And I've got this like built-in radar to just go for what's good. And these two are the ones that popped out off the shelves when it comes to me searching online. These are the two that everyone keeps talking about. I'm honestly saying to you guys, don't waste your money on buying both, don't compare. Just go straight for the Excalibur, you know? And if you don't believe me, then fine. You can go for the Sedona one. Touching back on looks. Okay, I've talked about the Excalibur quite a bit. Let's go back to the Sedona dehydrator. There are a few benefits to it, okay? I'm not gonna keep just saying that the Excalibur is the best because it's had its downsides, minus the off and on button and the controls are at the back. Let's look at the Sedona. The Sedona benefit, it has two fans and you can control which one you're using. You know, if you want to use both fans, you can, if you've got a heavy load in there. If you've got a small load, you can just use one fan. It's pretty cool, huh? Pretty neat. But it's minus a light. You can't see inside the dehydrator, which is a real shame because it does have a see-through door. Pro, okay? See-through door, pro. But you can't see through it, not unless your kitchen light is on or if you've got a torch, because it's pretty dark in there. Oh, it's got a day mode and a night mode which is pretty groovy, you know? Why do you think it would have that? It should make sense. Day mode is when you don't care about noise and night mode is when you want to go to sleep. And what else does it have which is pretty good? Oh, it's also got an on and off button, unlike the Excalibur. So if you're the kind of bells and whistles person, you can go for the Sedona Dehydrator. But then again, although it's got all of these cool attributes to the machine, it doesn't perform very well. And if you're looking for a well-built machine, I'd say go for the Excalibur. Be okay at the fact that the dials and everything are on the back. You only need to leave it on 115 anyway and just, you know, change it to eight hours. I usually just put it on for about seven to eight hours. I'm cool with that. You know? And then it'll turn itself off. Then I can just open it and I'm done. And if I know I'm gonna leave it for seven to eight hours, so I'll just get up, run about three hours in to flip whatever's in there. Be that the pie crusts, I'm going to be making some raw vegan pies or the that biscuits, cookies, anything that I want to flip. I'll just flip it midway through. But with the Sedona dehydrator, you're going to be waiting a while and you probably get sick. So I'm Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper. This has been your potential. This has been some additional advice as to how you can further facilitate your change in your diet to become your best version. Literally, well, do you know what? Your best version. Hmm. When I, when I say that, it sounds like it's really, really far away, but it's really not. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Let's call this us. You know, best version, we, we all know inside who we're supposed to be. We all know that we shouldn't be eating things that are making us feel sick, right? I, I know it's going off into a little tangent, but just really hear me out. Because if you really get this, you'll realize that your best version doesn't exist in the future. You carry your best version with you all the time. You just ignore that best answer, you know, that best inner voice, that best side of you all the time when you eat something that you know you shouldn't be eating. So if you want to live being that you which you should be, just don't eat the foods that make you feel sick, you know? Do what it is that you think you should do rather than having logic climb in, logic being the belief systems that you've been taught which has poisoned your mind, you know, giving you this logical side of your consciousness. And a lot of people out there are actually splitting their mind and creating this externalized logical mind, which really doesn't exist. It's just a part of their whole mind, which has been poisoned by logical thinking. 
you know you're all just one mind inside your body <laughs> and that deals with your body as well dealing with food but i'm not gonna go into that now now i know i'm i'm going off into another video i'm ryan james cropper and jc for short and i'll speak to you pretty soon hope this helped peace <laughs>